And there's the very first serve right there from the TRC with Jennifer Hinman serving to Mega Mahilas. Back with us here in the webcast booth is Sean Lenny. Score now is two to zero. With Jennifer jumping out to a quick lead here to start off this first game. The uh, pin number is eight four one four. This is the women's semifinals. score zero to two, Jennifer getting the first two quick points. Megan's widely considered, along with Anna Engel as the women's best hardball player. One, two. I'd love to see Anna Engel get back into it. She's a good player. Got a text message from Anna today who said she loved the no bad bounce call rule. It's a good rule. It's a nice shot by Jennifer. That shot kind of reminds me of a Sean Lenning type shot. <laughs> My name is Dave Vincent alongside Sean Lenning. We have uh, Dave Fink in the balcony. He's going to give us some sideline reporting a little later on. I don't believe Dave has that microphone right now, but. Dave, I know you played this tournament. Uh, care to comment on your performance? I didn't get a chance to see you play. <laughs> so you're just bringing that up then? This is curious, I think. People are curious. Played in the open doubles, just got defeated. Took 15 minutes. That's why you saw the end of that game and it was a delayed by a couple. I had to get my uh, Sprite from upstairs. It's a fun tournament to play and I, I really didn't, haven't played handball since early September. And I thought I'd come out and support Fred Lewis and Abe Montijo at the SA Kids program. It's hard to play in a tournament and do the live webcast, you chum. Yeah, I imagine. You're sitting here and slaving away with all these people st standing around you with all this expectation. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to play I in that am. environment. Game suffers. But you get a lot of free stuff. Now, did you get a Victoria's Secret package? I actually uh, did, yes. She did. She had it. She smelled really good yesterday. She had a good smell. I love her musk. It's a good yesterday. return from uh, Jennifer. I like that little shuffle return. Nice shot right there from oh, good hustle. Megan Mahilis, and then Jennifer picks the ball up, but on a double bounce. Hopefully we'll see a little fire out of Jennifer Hedman. She, well, can, we she can get riled up yeah, and enjoy it. Yeah, she had a little fire in her earlier match today. Megan just plays a very good fundamental game. Yeah. And then she does things like that, too, to keep you on your toes. Right, you think she's going to power it maybe dead center, maybe hop away from you, so you're playing sort of leaning to the left, and then she pounds it right down the right wall. That's sort of the philosophy or the mentality of a, of a pro qualifier in the men's brackets. She's got the right mindset, no doubt. Here it is. What she does with this back ball. That's pretty good. That's a tough ball to get back, and the hen does. Her dad watching this live webcast from a Hood River at Hinman Farms. You haven't done the Hood River Pro Am yet, have you, Sean? Um, I don't believe I have. It's only just a you know a couple miles away. All the terms run together, though. I wouldn't be That's surprised true. if I've been there. There is a conflict, but we are going to get you to that event because it is the best ever. Side out. And Don Hinman is one of the tournament directors. And it really is one of the best events you'll ever go to. 
So eventually we'll get you out of that poker table up there in Seattle and over to the Hood River Pro-Am. Well, that'd be ideal. I think so, but <laughs> I'd like that. everybody's got their own little thing, you know. <laughs> That's for sure. This is the women's semifinals match. That's what I'm talking about. Between Megan Mahilis, Jennifer Hinman, Dave Fink is actually going back up to the nosebleed section. They've got three layers here of seating at the TRC. Now, is Mahilis how we like to pronounce it, well, or Mahilos? It's I'm, I don't. That's an when, when they question. came over on a barge <laughs> back in the 1600s, it was Mahilis, and then all the friends of the Mahilises started calling them Mahilos. I went back to the original pronunciation just to keep it real. I respect that. But in the reality of things, I got a phone call one time from Gus Mahilis, who said, hey, David, this is Gus Mahilis. Just like that. <laughs> that and I said, sound like Gus at all. I know, I, I know, <laughs> but I, it was kind of like Albert Apuzzi meets, uh, <laughs> he meets, I don't know, but anyway, my, I guess my point is, the way he said it made me believe that if the guy is actually going to, you know, the father of Bill and, 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 and Megan said it like that, I thought, well, that's probably the way it should be said. So I started doing that. You Six or go four. With it. Yeah, no, that's how I did it. I mean, if your father would have said, hey, Dave, this is uh, Sean Lonnan, I would say, hey, that's Sean Lonnan, you know, this is Larry Lonnan, Sean Lonnan's father. You know, like all of a sudden you're Australian or something. I would have just done that forever, but. I have a rationale. And with that said, I'm going to flip on Dave Fink's microphone. I'm sure he's in. I'm sitting here courtside, guys. It's Jen off to a really nice start here, but she's already breathing heavy. Not a good sign here. We'll actually have a word with Megan Mahilis' coach and mother. Maybe we can talk to uh, Teresa, otherwise known as Terry. Uh, about the pronunciation of that's right Dave I am here with Terry Terry our first question is how do we actually pronounce Mahilos Mahilos you got it right you got it right Mahilos. Uh, I actually said two things she said I got it right so <laughs> it, it, it is Mahilos now now Terry what does it mean to you to have both of your kids as top-ranked handball professionals here right right near the top of their of their game and, and our sport I'm very proud of them. They work really hard, and they're doing awesome. They're doing good. Oh, you can't do much better than, than Megan and Bill are doing. Megan is you know, the numerous time national champion, three wall and four wall. How is it for you, Terry, sitting back and watching your daughter play here? Is this, is this very nerve wracking for you, or is this something that you've gotten used to over the years? I, I'm used to it, but I'm a little, always a little nervous, but I get used to it, so. Megan's off to a, a pretty slow start here in this semifinal match. And there you see a, a sort of a strange bounce there, but uh, you know, certainly Jen cannot be taken lightly. She's she's really coming up here in the game quickly. Uh oh. What what did you tell Megan? Uh, you know, I know that you do a little bit of coaching. Did you guys have a game plan coming into this this match? Yeah, I don't coach her at all. <laughs> she she knows a lot more than I do, so <laughs> That's called getting called out on a stage. And guys, it'll be <laughs> back to you here. <laughs> I, I would like to point out, Dave, that uh, even though Terry says it's Mahilos, she was married into that name. I'm not going to take, <laughs> I'm not taking that as a, uh, as a complete failure on my part. I'm going with Mahilos. So the argument continues. <laughs> it will continue. It's not a name she was given. Jen actually pointing at the floor there after she whiffed the back wall shot. Well, that's different than Chip Morales uh, raising the roof or... He jump. actually pushes the roof down. He pushes it down. Like <laughs> he does push it down. He, yeah, he goes down like this. He pushes <laughs> down. Jen's actually that. pointing down. Mm. Oh, I've seen him do that. That's a strong move. I told Chip he hasn't had any success pushing it down. Why not raise it? <laughs> I wish we could get to uh, get, a, get a video of that right now. We actually have a video. That'll be on the WPH bloopers. It's on the handballstore.com. Go ahead and purchase your copy right now, along with your all-access pass to the it's, WPH. There's also a whole reel of uh, 
Courtney Bichot dives on well, that's, that uh, blooper reel. <laughs> that's old news. That's already been promoted. Sorry to double promote. Sometimes when you overpromote something, it's not very effective. I'll admit it. That's a good serve by Megan. That's really effective. I'm Can sitting right here on the back wall, guys, and that ball scraping the back wall 90 degrees. Yeah, she didn't have much of an answer. That's good. There's a little fire from Jennifer. She's gonna start playing better right now. Let's listen for the score, no score. What, what's the score up there, Dave? Now it's a timeout from Jen Hinman. The score is 10 serving six. You see Jen Hinman actually out of camera view right now, but she was holding herself up against the side wall. She's completely exhausted here. She's also playing doubles, which I think, Dave, is a huge mistake at a tournament like this. None of the other women playing doubles, and she's putting herself behind the eight ball, as we say with the extra matches. This is the women's semifinals match alongside yours truly. My name is Dave Vincent. We have Sean Lenning and Dave Fink up in the balcony. Sean, uh, what is your philosophy on, and you know, a tournament like this where you can take it serious to a level where it's a pro stop, but also it's, there's, it's, it's a fun tournament and you could enter doubles and have a good time as well doing that. So how do you discern which ones you're gonna take serious and go both ways on? It's, there's a fine line, Dave. Um, if I get a good partner, I'm usually willing to play doubles. You know, that has a lot to do with it. <laughs> that, that does help out a little bit. I mean, you and I actually uh, played together, and that yeah. actually hurt your singles <laughs> game, I noticed, <laughs> in Canada when we won the national championship. Then your singles, you lost in the semis. We don't, yeah. We don't so we, that, I, I didn't mean to bring that up, but I mean, it, it hurt you to play with me. No, well, I enjoyed it, though. I got a lot of joy out of it, which is more important than. And a national and championship. And, and a national and championship. And he's got the silver. Which is strange in Canada for the trophy. I don't really bel believe we ever got anything for that, did we? Hearty handshake. Huh. I remember. Handed me an actual maple leaf, which I was surprised. <laughs> a real? It was a real maple leaf. Maple leaf. Here's the serve from Megan Mahilis. Not hearing the referee now making the announcement on the score. Now you still insist on calling her Megan Mahilis. Well, yeah, I, it, but Terry is is actually married into the family, so All she. Right. I don't think right. she has the luxury of listening to her husband say, "Hey, David, this is Gary Mahilis," or Guy uh, Gus. Jennifer has no answer for this serve. She looks very awkward trying to return this serve. She's tried to take some of these Z serves out of the air, some with her left and some off the bounce with her right. None of these strategies has been effective at all. And now it's Jen looking at the back wall and also the side wall as though that had some impact on her missing that return. I almost feel like she's just playing herself, you know, right behind the short line and just make herself seen and see if she can cut it off. Nothing else seems to work. Great shot from something. Megan. You hear that ovation from the gallery there. They appreciate the top seed here, ending rallies, coming over top of the ball with their left hand. I don't see Jennifer, uh, Megan actually doing anything other than the serve here. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is a great serve. Really good. She's saying, wait, if I can't do it on this serve, I'll do it on the second shot I hit. out of sorts. That's not a miss we see Jennifer make. 18, six. The score is now 18 serving six. After Jennifer Hemman jumped out to a five to nothing lead there to start this game. It's now 19 to six. 19, six. Outscoring the hen 19 to one. Which just proves that my math is Pretty still effective with, good. with this here. Sean, if you've Boy, been in this position where a serve starts working, do you ever deviate from it? And if the player scores one time, do you you decide to go to a different serve, or do you say, wait a second, one is nothing? 
I'm just going to stay with this thing. Because I see a lot of players actually get that one serve where they go, oh, well, I better change everything up. I just got 15 straight points here. Yeah, well, if I had any sense, I'd keep doing it. But I usually stop after one bad result. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's weird. It's it's definitely pretty mental. <laughs> and here. <laughs> the wittiest I was distracted by my... Mother, who's here, the wittiest laughing. person in your family, and she's not in the webcast booth. Strange and the enough. smartest one in the family, she insists. She also has the most hair. Sorry. Well, it's a given, Dave. Just be nice. The score is now 26, and that's the first game to Megan Mahilos ends the game on a 21 to 1 scoring run, completely in control. That's Dave Fink upstairs, and there it is the traditional softball throw from. Megan, she does it one time after every match or every game. You'll always see that. It's always on a webcast and it's always being filmed. That's Dave Fink upstairs in the gallery. We are back here in the studio, which is an outside studio with Sean Lenning. Um, Sean, you know, uh, Jennifer had that momentum. She jumped out to a studious lead there in that first game against Megan. And it looked like she had the momentum and she actually had Megan maybe on her back, you know, back feet or off balance a little bit but then Megan started making the adjustments and she is holding true what's what's going on here well you know an early lead doesn't always mean much in my opinion guys are just getting in the rhythm you know just I know personally I'm a slow starter so it doesn't really bother me if I get down 5-0 and didn't bother Megan well do you but think that because of that we should change the scoring from 21 point games to maybe like a 15 point game just to maybe make that feel out uh, situation between two different players happen a little bit quicker where you you start seeing immediate impact or do you s you, you like the scoring the way it is or would you would you think for the fans or maybe even for the players that it should be modified I, I like the three games of 21 I think that's what we should really be doing I like the kind of dynamic the back and forth the makes it kind of more like you know chess and checkers I think I think there's a lot going on, especially a 21 tiebreaker. What's up with that? I, huh? I'm all you for like it. That? I, I like love it. it. We do that. Isn't it funny how I was I was thinking of the things that we do in practice that we don't do in actual tournaments, and I don't understand the philosophy. First, first of all, when we're playing doubles, we're always rotating, right? We hit it to the guy on the right. We hit a guy on the left. When when you play uh, locally, you always uh, play the tiebreaker to 21. Yet in a tournament, we only play to 11. Yes. I'm, I'm sure there's more things out there. Well, first of all, you never call avoidable hinders when you're <laughs> You just don't do it. Unless you're um, Joe Cox. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it can, right now? <laughs> it can actually happen. But there's a lot of weird things that we do in practice. You know, in some places, they, they don't play bad bounces. Some places do play bad bounces. And there's just uh, sort of unwritten rules that you do in, in, in practice that you don't do in tournaments. But they always say that you, you play like you practice. Right, but then when we go into the play time, it's always so serious and tense. You've got you got referees calling quick, you know, screen calls and quick hinders. It doesn't seem like it's completely fair. Mm. Mm. Okay. How do you mm. take that? <laughs> Would you make any modification? Would you say, hey, let's just do this three games to 21. Let's uh, play everything. Let's. Uh, I like to play everything. I like the three games 21. You know, I like not many hinders. How we play in Tucson here? That's how the. Young right. Bucks play. You just play through everything. If and you can fight your way to the ball, it's good. This is the home of the Handball Hall of Fame, for for goodness sakes. Goodness. God, by zero. golly. Gosh. We're not in the Bible Belt. You can actually say what you want to say here. It's a nice get from the hen. Well, this game has started. This is where Jennifer needs to be, nice. right? In that position where she can she can strike you. One zero. One I serve like zero. this serve better than her power serve. It just seems to me that that serve that Megan Mahilas has is so effective that yeah. why wouldn't Jennifer just say, oh, I'm going to try to do that, see what you do. That might be another unwritten rule of handball, but when a player has a great serve against you, you do it to them, and all of a sudden they seem to stop doing it. Like, okay, well, I'll stop doing it if you stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that. And sometimes you just want to shove it up their poo-poo drawers when you keep they keep yeah. doing that serve to you, you want to do it back one, to them. Yeah. Show them what's up. I'm gonna, well, I do it all the time. I do it to see how they return it. 
<laughs> okay, I got up here because you made a hand error, but I want to see how you return that because I can't return it. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're doing. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that to you next time. And then all of a sudden, it just magically goes away. Mm -hmm. That's a good kill by Megan Mahilos. That was a beauty. She's going for it. This is game number two of the women's semifinals. Megan Mahilos, if Terry's listening, and if Gus is listening, it's Mahilos versus Jennifer Hinman. She needs to get ready. Jennifer does. When she gave her that big fat setup, she needs to move up. She was just kind of lollygagging, hanging out. You need to be on your toes. You can get that ball. Easy. Four one. Four serves one. And when you're talking about moving up, you're just saying just go right to the middle of the court, maybe toward the uh, football line, and just get ready. Right? Have both yeah, hands out. Yeah, well, I, I like to tell players it's much harder to be passed than it is to, you know, be Five killed one. upon. If you That's will. exactly what I would say. Uh, um, and you know, you got to dare him to pass you. It's much more difficult to hit a perfectly placed pass shot because you can always adjust and go back and get a pass shot more than you can a one foot kill if you're just kind of flat footed hanging back. So That's you got to get up there and just kind of let yourself be seen more than anything. It also plays into their head because now they know they're going to go for a kill shot with you waiting for it right in the middle of the court. Yeah, look so at that shot. I know. Wow. You're going to have to like force them to make the most perfect kill shot with you standing at the short line. Yeah, And then not? what do they do? They have to go try to pass it in an unorthodox position. So. One five. Yeah, and you know, as they're striking it, you should be able to tell if it's going high or low anyway. Then you can adjust. That's a fish shot. It's a from beauty. Me. I love that shot. It's a really effective shot if you can do it. Well, we've seen you do that multiple five times. One. That little punch, paddle, left poke. Yeah, you kind of take it earlier than they expect, ideally. The short hop. Fist. Nice shot from Megan. That's a perfectly placed pass shot, really. Really sweet. Nice camera angle. 6 1. The referee is Fergal Collins, and there the, uh, she is. Woo! Megan Mahila stepping in with yeah. the right hand. Excuse me, Jay Hinn. And that's maybe the way to do it, although I think Megan yes. miss hit that One serve hit. just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit, but at least she was there, put herself in a position to get that ball early. I like this, too. This keeps Megan out of the front court. It's a good shot by Two. Jennifer. I wish someone would answer that. <laughs> Two six. <laughs> Two serves. <laughs> I like that ringtone, though. Yeah. Sounds like an alien's landing in uh, some of the Atari games back in the 70s. And I like that return of serve by Megan. That's what we were talking about earlier, not letting the ball play you. Not just taking it where it's going to end up. I like how she cut that ball off. Tree six. All right, that was tree. That's as in, like, you know, that has leaves. Tree six. That ball just barely touches the front wall, and then a miss hit from Ooh. Megan Mahilis. Now four to six. We saw earlier where Megan was like had four, calf issues, four, where she six. had maybe like a cramp in her calf. We haven't seen anything from her. That's a three wall. Referee is Fergal Collins. We call him Turtle. Second we will third. translate the score as they come <laughs> in. <laughs> Nice shot from Megan. She caught Jennifer flat-footed again. You really need to be on your toes at this level. You gotta be, have happy feet. You gotta be kind of dancing Six, all the four. time. So if you were gonna give advice to any of the women pros that were here, and you said you just have to follow my one thing I'm gonna tell you, is that get back to the center of the court and play up, or is it some other? I think court position is just overlooked sometimes. Court position is incredibly important. And you make more gets. You know, that way, you just, six. people don't notice it because you're just there, but court position is subtle. It's hard to kind of be a spectator and notice, but where a player is, like right now, if you're Megan, oh, wow, good shot. But Jennifer could have gone up another 10 feet there and forced Megan to do that exact same shot. Megan did it anyway and missed it, but 
you know, it's sort of like an offensive, you're being offensive with your defense, right? Sure. Yeah, I think to any player, not just these women players, but just think about your core position. Think about right now, if I'm Megan, I'm up another five feet and cutting that ball off. You know a duck's coming. This is tough. That's oh, yeah. beautiful. But see, again, a good if, adjustment. Yeah, if Megan is standing up there a little bit closer to the front, she she would have still had to dive for that ball. Let's go to Dave Fink, who is courtside. Uh, Dave, I know that you're probably up in the balcony right now. I'm actually down near courtside on the, the lowest of the three levels here at the Tucson Racket Club. That was a diving flat kill off the back wall from Megan Mihilos. How did you get into that area down there? I know that they're checking they're actually carting people and making sure they have the lanyards on and the VIP passes. Oh I actually used the old the old press man excuse, walked in with my microphone and headphones on and wow. looked important. Good I used, to, I used to do that at share concerts. Hmm. Mm. The Navy outfit on. This is the second Five game of seven. the women's semifinals. Five serve seven with Jennifer Hinman serving to Megan Mahilis. Get up there. You have to say Get up there, the Jeff. biggest weakness in Jennifer's game besides the return of the Z-serve is her fitness. Just Six, completely out of gas here. Now she said come the next couple of months she's going to focus on her uh, conditioning a little more. She actually told me that. She told me the same thing. That's yeah. So we're, we're going to see a, an improved Jay Hinman shortly. Just hang on, spectators. We call Not her the Hin game. here. The Hin. Yeah, if she works on that part of her game, she'll be, uh, and she'll be more apt to, you know, have those happy feet and more inclined to be in better position. Megan Mahilos is a very... <laughs> <laughs> That's coming from the, 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 the women's side of the family there, Dave. She's very disciplined in her workouts. She workouts in the CrossFit program, her and her brother Billy belong to a CrossFit gym. Now that means that they go and Eight, work out seven. for an hour every day, a different workout every day. Dave, very much like you eat a different bag of potato chips every day. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> Nine, seven. That is actually it's true. Is that my little one? That was funny. No, that's not, it's not, I don't know why you're laughing. That's actually true. <laughs> I really do eat a different bag. It's the 99 centers that you get at... Uh, Costco, I buy a pallet of shrink wrapped. A chips, pallet. A pallet of shrink wrapped <laughs> chips, and I eat them. I mean, it's just my one a day. You know, everybody has their their vices. Nice shot. Megan follows that ball so oh, well. Oh, yes, she really does. The hen completely misjudging that shot. It looked like from court side that it would run straight down the right side wall, but it just clipped the right side wall into Jen, and she makes the hand air seen Jennifer make many hand airs on the tour this year. What's the, how many exactly? Well, she has we 17. Have we, on no, we have 17. That's uh, 12 months almost of tournaments, and 17 hand airs is pretty darn good. It's not bad. I mean, Derek Jeter had 11 airs as shortstop, won the Eight gold nine. glove this year mm. at 36. A lot of people would say that the gold glove is mostly political. I, I actually agree with you on that, which was very rare for me to agree on anything that you say. Derek Jeter was not the best shortstop. And well, he doesn't have the opportunity to make many airs, Dave, because his range limits him to just six <laughs> inches in either direction. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. But in Jennifer's case, that is one hell of a record. And we're talking nine, 17 nine. hand airs, not counting that last one, of course. That one where she dove and mis completely mishit it. That wasn't a hand air. Well, we, we actually don't count the hand airs, Dave. That's something Gene Tasner does. And it's it's really subjective in her mind what is and isn't a hand air. That's yeah. right. But she's a top pro player, former top ten, and I believe in her stats. That's that's true. I believe in them. I really do. I believe in those stats. I'm out. Me too. Score is ten nine. Ten serves nine, and the great thing about you know, technology, we always talk about the WPH and being innovative and, and driving technology. But the greatest thing about this organization is uh, with our stats, um, we're able to actually get the stats through uh, streaming uh, online e-fax and uh, 
We also have the iPod. I actually have them texted directly to my phone. Me too. Yeah, I get texts too, but it's, it's, you know, I don't know if you've ever done uh, uh, getting the, the live chat on your iP iPad or your iPhone. That's uh, it's always helped me out. It's good too. There's the, the, droid the traditional. That's the Jay Hinman. After a, a timeout, she does that. <laughs> I always look forward to that. Sort of like LeBron James throwing the Chalk. the powder into the air, uh -huh. that's right, before yeah. the game. Ten to nine is the score here in the second game with Megan actually having a one point lead and she has a big setup down the left wall. She goes for it and misses it. Oh, had the wrong spin there. Now, Dave, I know oh you're downstairs in the gallery, but when nine you were talking ten. to Teresa Terry, as we call her, the mom of Megan, that's a nice diving wow. get right there from Jennifer Hinman. Really good. That's where she does her best work, on the floor like that. Hmm. Um, but when you're talking to uh, Teresa, did she tell you uh, anything about that calf with, with Megan? No, you. I saw her limping a little bit and gra grasping. That's that same calf where it, it became uh, kind of corrupt during the three wall nationals when she got defeated by Tracy Davis this year. Hmm. So I just see it as a returning injury, possibly. It could be from the, the foot stomp pre-serve mm. causing that calf injury <laughs> from Megan. Can I comment on Jennifer's serve? Absolutely. I, I, Let's talk I about hate it. the power serve from, you know, one side of the court, you know, from the far right or far left. It's be just not as effective. Do you feel that? I wish she would get towards the middle a little bit, adjust her swing, and practice that. And then you have the option of going down both sides, a little deception involved. When she stands all the way, or anybody stands all the way to one side and does a power serve, not only is it more likely to come around to the player's right hand off the back wall, side wall front, or side wall back wall, but it's, you have no chance of going down the right, and players just kind of know it's coming. You feel that that serve, and both players on the ground here. Looks like Rocky and Apollo at the end of <laughs> Rocky II there. Exactly. I think Jennifer is, I don't, what's going on with the hen here? Is she okay? I, mean, I don't know. The hen has actually been counted out there. That was a count of 10. Was that a 10 count there? Yes. Is this a tap out? What's going on here? This is You're talking about that foot stomp that, uh, that Megan has, and maybe that's the cause of her calf strain. Is it Sean Casey, the former first baseman of the Cincinnati Reds? Didn't he have that same foot stomp? That's a little too obscure for most of our audience. <laughs> Not to me, though. And yes, he did. <laughs> oh, watch this setup right here. Watch what Megan does to this. Puts you it see, away. You see that footwork, Dave Fink? We were kind of talking about flowing with the ball, you know, and she That's did that perfectly there. That's, that's absolutely true. Yeah, she didn't wait. You know, she was just kind of flowing with it. Short ball, not called by the ref. Jennifer Hinman knows this is short. She's going to ask for appeal, but there is no line judges. Actually, she won't ask for an appeal. That ball looked good from courtside. Huh. Sean actually felt it was short as well. Well, 14, 11. 14 serves <laughs> 11. I'll cut you off no matter what you try to say. In fear of going the other way. A terrible shot there from Jen. Full fire. Telling herself to kill the ball. She's only killed four balls in two matches so far today. 15, that seems a little low, Dave. Yeah, but I don't think that was a, that was not a position where you'd want to kill the ball. I mean, she, the ball didn't come into, the, into that zone yeah. for her to kill the ball. I don't know why she would even yell that. Why not say, hit the ceiling? Or drive down the left. I have her pinned. Hmm. Or as I do, just make a hand error. And then I, like, I like people that yell out really specific things like Chip Morales. <laughs> which is <laughs> which is like, hit the ball around three walls in order to. <laughs> he just goes on. With instructions. It's like a, you're, you're <laughs> like, like baking a cake with Chip Morales. <laughs> Am I right, Think? You that's know what I'm talking that's about. true. The Chip Morales. Chip Morales is getting a lot of airtime here today, as he should. <laughs> He's actually he never been on a webcast before. Ever. But he's talked about it. He actually has been on a webcast. Oh. And it didn't turn out well. Hmm. Mm. And you know that plays back in when you see the hen go to the 
underhand. She does that after every timeout. She also does it after every match, even if it's uh, a Fast match ball. that she loses. 16 serves 11 is the call here from Megan Mahilis. There it is, just over the line. Nice. Beautiful That's shot from beautiful. Megan. Really good. She got down low, focused. Had and confidence it would be the last shot of the rally. She wasn't even trying to get up afterwards. Well, really, Sean, it has to be the last shot of the rally because if she doesn't execute that shot, it's a big setup with her out of position. That's true. It seems that Jennifer has it adjusted, though, to that monstrous serve that Megan had in that first game. That's, that's true. That's the reason she's she's been competitive here in this second game. The first game was really Jennifer with no answer for the Z-serve. Do you think that maybe the hen had a text message from her life coach, Dave? Well, that's, it's possible. I'm, uh, I'm not sure that might be something I can ask her in our post-match interview should she win this match, Dave. Right, okay, she has to go on a run. It appears unlikely, though. Are the stencilers in the building right now, or? No. Mm. Come on. She's got this. Watch this, sir. I, I don't understand what Fergal is saying there. He said it was probably a screen. Why would a referee even say that, Dave? <laughs> if it's probably a screen, why don't you just call it? You're the referee. Pretty good footwork there. And nice there's shot. the hen with her fifth kill of the day. Made that look routine, too. 12 serves 18. This game is really easy sometimes. Here's another opportunity. Here's a setup. I like that shot from Megan. All about footwork. Megan Look goes it. for it and she hit, ah. hits that shot right down the right. You know, it takes okay. a lot of guts to take that shot from back there, although she is up. Mm. Very strong. That's why she's one of the top players. That's Megan's favorite shot, taking the ball off the bounce, off the right side wall and taking it back into the right corner. I think her sliding pass shots, Dave, with power, sort of the three wall shots are really the best thing that she does in the sport because she had she had to take an inside out with power there forcing the hen to have to run back she does it so well look at that incredible power the hen does extremely nice well shot. To, to track that ball down here's a setup and hit a good shot with it that one not so much oh. there's a timeout called from Jennifer Hinman, you're watching the women's semifinals here in Tucson, Arizona at the TRC. It's Dave Fink in the gallery. I believe you're sitting courtside and Sean Lenning to the right of me. Watching Sean, do you call a lot of timeouts when you're trailing 11-20, match point down? Well, every time I'm down 11-20, I call a timeout. Mm. Is that just a score that is something that resonates with you, Sean? Or <laughs> Not so much. Is it just you know, if I was Jennifer, I'd just come out and look at this beautiful sunset we have here in Tucson, and then maybe the just kind of get spiritually rejuvenated. That, there's nothing wrong there with that. I mean, the spiritual rejuvenation that of... That can help your handball. Yeah, I mean, the Catalina foothills have yes. one of the greatest sunset background backdrops that you'll see this side of Sedona, mm -hmm. which is only has a crow flies about an hour away from here. Yeah, and that's no joke. Really beautiful. The hint makes it seem as though she's throwing her underhand fastball to warm up her arm, but really we know it's just a trademark. <laughs> Don't try to patent it. Don't try to copy it. This is hers. She's got it. I'd like to see Jennifer take that serve. And that'll do right. it. Nice shot. And Megan gets that point, and they're going to shake hands right here. Watch this prediction. Look at that. That is Megan Mahilis winning in two straight versus Jennifer Him, and tomorrow we have the finals as Megan Mahilos faces Jennifer Hinman. We're going to get, uh, excuse me, Megan Mahilos is now going to face <laughs> Tracy Davis in a, a rematch of the Three Wall Nationals. Dave Fink is going to take his sporting garb out there door, toward the dart, dotted line uh, with I like uh, that Megan. outfit. I, I think he looks great. Uh, go Thanks ahead, guys, Dave. but this is all about Megan Mahilos now who advances to her 38th consecutive final here with a, a great win over Jenna Hinman. Is there some measure of revenge you're looking for tomorrow against Tracy? We know that she dethroned you in Toledo. This will be your first matchup against her since that, that loss in Labor Day weekend. Uh, sure, yeah, I'm excited about playing her. I like to play her in three ball as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear that honest answer from Megan. Megan, we know that 
you just lost the finals at the U.S. Open to Ashley and Riley, also lost the finals in Toledo. What does it mean to you to come out here and reestablish yourself as really the top player, you know, one of the top players in the women's game? Um, I'm excited to be in the final, um, and we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Tracy's always tough, so I think it'll be a good match. Anything that you, you're thinking about going into tomorrow's match against Tracy, we know how much she's improved her four-wall game. Is there a certain strategy that you'll go in there and try and execute, or you just sort of go in there and, and play your game? Um, I have some strategies. I probably won't announce them <laughs> so she can hear it, but, yeah, she's definitely improved a lot. You could tell she's playing a lot of four-wall, so... I think it'll be a good match. Thank you very much, Megan. The Bill Belichick of women's handball doesn't <laughs> want to give anything away. Megan, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Congratulations on your win. Dave, back to you. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, the Bill Belichick. Uh, but the thing is, she's also, don't I mean, don't think she's not, but she's also videotaping secretly <laughs> some of the practice matches of Tracy Davis, which is, by the way, not allowed in WPH sanctioned events, um, which, uh, it's currently under investigation. It's pending an investigation. <laughs> I made all that up. <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> Megan Mahilos uh, defeating the Hen, Jennifer Hinman from mm. Hood River tomorrow, though, at 9 o'clock Mountain Time, which is going to be 8 a.m. Pacific or 11 in the East Coast time zone. If you're wondering about Central, that is going to be at 10 a.m. We'll start off the live webcast. I'm not going to tell you which match that is, but I have a feeling it is the pro doubles final with Sean Lenny, my broadcast partner here, with your partner, Chris Maldo. Maldonado. And his uh, uh, beautiful wife and his baby are going to be courtside, and then and, and yours truly, and then it's going to be um, Fergal Collins and Abraham Montijo. Going down. Yeah, that's going to be at... Uh, it's going to be at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then after that, I'm sure there's going to be another match. But I know we're going to have a full day, Dave. I know you have the schedule um, memorized from back to front. Actually, don't know if we'll be televising the women's third place match, but I would certainly like to watch that. It'll be Bailey Chandler and the Hin facing off for what would be a third matchup. They split their first two. That would be very interesting to watch, and you're right. That would be a nice game to get on. Uh, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the actual schedule is posted right on the front of the website. So we'll uh, be back tomorrow for Jeff Castor, Sean Linning, Dave Fink, and all of those here in beautiful Tucson, Arizona at the TRC that have helped this live broadcast come to fruition. Thank you. Renee Sitter, Fred Lewis, Fred Banfield. Dennis Healy. Dennis Healy as well, Sean, <laughs> as... Those that have refereed the matches throughout the day, Raul Felix, Vince San Angelo, and Char Charlie Wicker, as well as Fergal Collins, and all and of those people that have helped volunteer, like Duncan. And a big shout out to Michael Gregan and Charlie Shanks watching and, in Ireland. And, and also those guys as well that are watching back home. For all of those that have helped out, my name is Dave Vincent. We're going to be back tomorrow morning, Thank you. 9 o'clock here in Mountain Time. For more live action on the live webcast, thanks for tuning in. WPHlive.tv. Have a great night.